Today we're going to learn all about creating a tessellation. What is a tessellation? If you look at some examples from the artist M.C. Escher, you will see some interesting shape formations. He creates a shape that can actually fit into itself repeatedly over and over until it fills a page. M.C. Escher was a famous Dutch artist born in Holland. He really wanted to be an architect. He had many talents. He was a printmaker, a book illustrator, tapestry designer, and a muralist. His mental imagery is what he became famous for. He created metamorphic designs. This picture of the birds and fish is an example of a metamorphic design. It changes from a bird to a fish right before your eyes. Positive and negative spaces are creatively arranged to confuse us. This is called mental imagery. If you're not sure what a positive and negative space is, well, this picture is just going to confuse you even more. If you think you see a white candle holder or goblet in the middle of the page, then you think you're looking at a white positive space and all the black around it is negative space or air. But if you're seeing two human heads looking at each other, then you see the black space as the positive space or the solid part and the white becomes the air between the two faces. So in this example, the positive space can be either the black or the white. Take a look at this one. Do you see white legs belonging to ladies going down and black legs belonging to men going up? Well, the positive space between each leg is actually the leg of the other person. So that's a really creative and innovative idea. Another word for creative would be original, unique, novel, or new. We're looking for something new from you, from this project and everything that you do. Level three of our learning goal says I can use creative and innovative ideas to create my artwork. I can create a tessellation using positive and negative space. Please take a moment now to read over the other levels so you'll know what's expected of you. Let me start by showing you some student examples of tessellations that were done in art class. You're going to be creating a shape that can be traced beside itself, above itself, and below itself without any gaps or spaces, without any negative space. Have fun with your creations. When you first create the shape, you're not even going to know what it is until you trace it out, look at it from all directions, and then see something inside your shape that you can recognize and develop. You're going to use markers, crayons, and colored pencils to completely color in your entire page. So if you're ready to get started, follow along with the video and I'll show you how to create a shape that can tessellate. The paper on the left is 9 by 12. That's very close to the size of the paper that's in your sketchbook. If you're going to do it that size, you're going to want a 2 inch by 2 inch card. You can use any thick paper, even a cereal box if you want to cut it down to two by two. If you have large paper and you want to do this 12 by 18, then we would use a three by three inch card. Start by drawing a dot in the bottom two corners of your card. You're going to connect those dots with a line and it does not need to be exactly like my line. If you can make it different, your whole shape will turn out different than mine, and we can turn yours into something quite different for your tessellation. Now, very, very carefully cut on that line without ruining either the small shape or the large shape. Fit it back in its home. See how that doesn't quite fit? No. Make sure it fits back in its little home, and then you're going to slide it straight across the square and tape it so it's at the very top edge. Make sure it's not overlapping like that. No, no, no. Make sure it's flush, just touching the edge. And get a piece of masking tape or scotch tape and hold it down just like that. All right, the next thing you're going to do is make a shape on the right-hand side. 
So I'm making two dots where I want to connect and keeping it simple. Nothing too crazy because you do need to cut on that line with scissors. And you're going to cut that shape out and that's all you're going to cut. Two shapes. One on the bottom, one on the right. Not on the top, not on the left, just the bottom and the right. Once again, you're going to put the small piece back into its little home so it fits perfectly and then pick it up and slide it straight across the square, this time going to the left. Make sure it matches up with the same bump on the other side. So the hole on the right matches the bump on the left exactly. And then tape it down like you did the first time. The tape should not hang over the edges. It should just fit on the paper, but not be so big that it hangs out beyond the edges. Well, so you've finished creating a tessellated shape, and now the challenge is to figure out what the heck it is. It has to be something. It has to be something recognizable. So you might need to turn it to the right and to the left or diagonally slanted, and suddenly you'll start seeing things in it like faces, tails, hands, animals. Eureka! I think I see something. I think I see an elephant head. Do you see the trunk? It's the long part hanging from the bottom and the two big things sticking out on the side are going to be ears. All right, so I think I'm gonna keep it like this and trace around it. Even if you don't know what it is yet, go ahead and trace around it because it's easier to see something once you take off the cardstock and just look at the shape. But let's see how this tessellates. The bumps on the one side fit into the hole that's on the other side. So you've got to figure out where you can tuck the shape in where it fits. Trace around it very carefully because it only works if you trace the exact shape that you cut. And now we're gonna pick it up and find out where it fits again. Right there, see that? Perfectly. Tuck it in and you don't need to trace the place where it does fit. You're only gonna be tracing the part that is outside of that area. If it doesn't fit exactly, it may be because you taped it a bit off. Sometimes you can fudge it and make it look like it's still fitting. Right there, perfect, that's a perfect fit. I'll trace everything that's not touching the pencil line. You can continue to fill the entire page up with the same tessellated shape repeatedly. Or you could decide that you're going to add something else to it. So if these are going to be elephant heads, I think I'm going to leave a little bit of room below them so I can make a few elephant bodies. You'll see. I'm going to add another one to the left and then another one to the right. There should never be any space between the shapes when you're tessellating. If there is a space between it, you've done something wrong. It should tuck in there very nicely and leave no spaces. I'm going to stop after this one and show you the elephant that I see. I'll start by extending the lines of the trunk into the face and add the eyes to the side of the trunk and then put a curve for the face where I want the ears to extend beyond the face. I'm putting curved lines in the trunk to make it look more three-dimensional like a cylinder or tube. And then I'll probably draw a decorative line inside the ear and maybe I could color in the inner ears. I repeat that with each one I could change the expressions on their faces if I wanted to make different eyebrows or different mouth expressions or even different eyes. I may do that in a moment, make some changes. Be sure to do all of your drawing in pencil first. We'll go over this later in black, but I never recommend using a black marker to start with because it's just too hard to change our mistakes and we've already put so much work into this. We don't want to start it over. Notice I've changed the eyes a little bit and the eyebrows. And I think I might make a little mouth coming up from underneath the trunk 
with different expressions on the mouth. I'm going to fast forward this now so you can see how I finish it. And here's where I'll start drawing some bodies. The ones on the bottom, I can see their whole body. And then the ones that are behind, I might just see a portion of their bodies. Here's a little mouse on the top of the head. I think it needs a little land, so I'll put some grass behind them. Everything above that's going to be sky. And I think I'm done with part one of my tessellation drawing. Next week, you'll come back to outline everything you just did with a black marker and then to color it in with crayons, markers, and colored pencils. Welcome back to part two, where we're going to color in your tessellation. Take a look at some of the examples. You can see this person chose to leave some white space around their nine tessellated shapes. This one also left a little bit of space around the outside to color in later. Notice how the color of the background matches the color of the hats on the dog's head. Notice how the background is marker, but the dogs are crayon. This one also has a very abstract, colorful background with a lightly colored crayon subject. This is the first one that used their tessellated shape to fill the entire page. This student did something similar to my elephants. They drew the bodies on the bottom three. Birds turn out to be a very common subject for tessellations. They often do look like birds. You could include a nest full of eggs like this student did. Notice the one in the middle. The tessellated shape looked like a pig on one side and a wolf on the other side. So they just created a pig wolf character and colored it in gray and pink. You could try something like that too. I like the black background. It has a lot of contrast to the animal's heads. Well, it's your turn now to start using your black permanent marker to trace over everything you drew last week and then deciding where it would be best to use markers, crayons, or colored pencils to color in the entire picture, including the background. Be sure to take a photo of it and share it with me when you're done.